Hi, in this video we will talk about word embeddings and their use in the Spacey Natural Language Processing Library. As introduced in the previous video, word embeddings are a technique for learning numerical representations for words that approximate their lexical meaning. These representations are learned by observing words in their context of occurrence in large volumes of data. This provides a word with a vector, essentially a long list of numbers, that defines a point in the embedding space. Spacey provides pre-trained word vectors for several languages. For example, the large language model for English contains vectors for over half a million tokens in the model's vocabulary. And each of these vectors is 300 dimensional, meaning that it consists of 300 floating point numbers that encode information about the lexical meaning of the word. To explore the use of these vectors in Spacey, let's start by importing the library and loading a large language model for the English language, which we assign under the variable NLP underscore LG. Next, we define some example text and feed it to the language model and store the resulting spacey doc object under the variable doc. The spacey doc object is essentially a sequence of token objects which we can access using brackets. So what we do here is we retrieve the second token in the doc object and its vector attribute which contains the 300 dimensional word vector and retrieve the first 30 dimensions of the vector representation. These floating point numbers encode information that the word embedding model has learned about the token Shiba in its context of occurrence. As explained in the previous videos, we can use cosine similarity to measure how close two vectors are to each other in the embedding space. And just to remind you, words with similar meanings should be close to each other in the embedding space. Spacey implements cosine similarity in the similarity method, which is available for token span and doc objects. The similarity method simply takes another Spacey object as input and calculates cosine similarity between the vectors for the two objects. To exemplify, we can get the tokens dog and cat from the doc object and assign them under their own variables and then use the similarity method available for the token object to calculate their cosine similarity. And as you can see, the vectors for cat and dog are quite close to each other in the embedding space, which is not surprising because one could imagine these two tokens occurring in similar linguistic contexts. Let's go back to the doc object that we created in the beginning of this video. If we retrieve the vector for the doc object from the attribute vector and examine its attribute shape, we will see that the doc is also represented by a 300 dimensional vector. It's important to understand that these representations are not learned from the data but constructed from the vectors learned for tokens. The vectors for doc objects are constructed by averaging the vectors for token objects that make up the doc. The same applies to span objects, that is sequences of tokens within a doc object, whose vector representations are constructed by averaging the vectors of the participating token objects. We can examine this by retrieving the noun phrases in the doc, which are available under the attribute noun underscore chunks, which returns a Python generator that we then cast into a list that we store under the variable n underscore chunks. This gives us a list of three noun phrases, the Shiba Inu, a dog, and a cat. If you know your dogs, or memes, then you probably know that the Shiba Inu is a kind of a dog, which would lead us to expect that their vector representations should be fairly similar. Just as above, we can use the similarity method to compare the similarity of the vector representations for 
the first noun phrase the Shiba Inu and the second noun phrase a dog which gives us a cosine similarity value of roughly 0 0.39. Compared to the cosine similarity between vectors for dog and cat this of course is much lower. Keep in mind that the vector defines a point in the embedding space and when we construct vectors for noun phrases such as these we simply average the vectors causing the point to move in the embedding space. At the same time the vector should encode the identity or the lexical meaning of a given word which may become more and more diluted when you average the vectors for multiple tokens. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this brief introduction to word vectors in Spacey useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks.